Jamie's team is missing. They went to investigate the alarm hours ago. On it. I'll find them. Hey. Never mind. Dream logic is a requirement for survival. Some things aren't connected by causality, but rather by the meaning we give them. new. No. I walk the path between static lines. I have the control. Let's go. of power in terms of who controls them. Yes. The white non-space, the ever-present inverted The board, all linked, 
intrinsically tied in terms of who controls them. Yes. Regardless, this place is vitally important to the future. Most information on the app is classified, but fair warning. This is gonna be weirder than usual. Jesse arrives, they are invaded by the Hiss, um, an otherworldly force. Um, they kill the current director of the FBC, and Jesse is chosen to be the new director and has to get the house back under control. That's a rough first day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Now, there's also, it seems like there's this, with the supernatural aspect, I know we're looking at this right now. Um, I, I don't want you to give anything away, but can you tell us a little bit about how that affects the gameplay? Well, Jesse has supernatural uh, abilities that you're gonna, well, the director of the bureau can use. Like Excalibur, then, yeah. Yeah, um, and then you have the supernatural abilities, but like what we're seeing here now is kind of one of the things you wanna do with the game is kind of juxtaposition of the mundane and then also the sort of craziness, there's plenty of that, um, then plenty of that in the game. So this clip is from the Behind Closed Doors uh, demo that we're showing here at E3. Just wanted to give people a sneak, sneak peek of it. I should maybe be quiet and let, let the images speak for themselves. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is normal. <laughs> So it's very strange. We have some of the people that are floating, and then there's this other one that's actually not. Oh, there we go. That's there weird. we go. So that's the shield, and you can kind of see we we have these reactive environments in the game. Uh, there's quite a bit of destruction, and now we're using one of the supernatural abilities there, a uh, very deadly chair, yeah. and we're gonna use the shield again. You can see how the environment kind of reacts to all of that. Like when Jesse pulls up the shield the objects nearby will start to levitate as well. So there's a lot of sort of... Uh, so this environmental destruction, that, how does yeah. it affect the gameplay? Can you use it to your advantage? Or you can you use it to, against your enemies offensively as well? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, you can see that she can pick up things like the fire extinguishers and the clock and other elements and hurl them at the enemy. She can pick up debris and use it as a shield. Um, and she'll get other abilities that will allow her to manipulate the environment yes. as well. Yeah, really trying to build like this sandboxy kind of thing with control because you have your abilities, you have the service weapons, so players will have a lot of choice in kind of how to approach things. And of course, they can cause a lot of really, really good looking destruction. Right, so what brought Remedy to control? Like, why did you want to make this game? Um, well, it's Sam Lake's vision, and as he was making some other games, working on Alan Wake and Quantum Break, he had some ideas that didn't entirely fit into those games, and so he sort of made a mental note uh, that they were something he wanted to pursue in the future. And so coming out of Quantum Break, he revisited those ideas and had the oldest house idea, this sort of world within a location, constantly transforming and branching otherworldly place and from that this whole idea of the bureau rose and there we have control 
Now we know that she is trying to defeat the hiss mm -hmm. and also figure out what this whole, you know, trying to get control of this whole bureau is. Um, are there certain quests that she goes on? Is there tasks that she has to do to get to the next level? Is it broken up like that or is it more like open world? Well, she is the director, so the director has lots of different, lots of different jobs. Um, definitely not open world. Just want to make sure we're talking in the right terms. It's much more of a kind of open-ended game than what we've okay. done before. It's more of a sandbox. You can actually kind of, along the way, not everybody's going to be hostile uh, in the oldest house. And then on top of that, there's going to be some really challenging gameplay that yeah. we're not going to talk about just yet. <laughs> All okay. right, I like it. Give it to her. Now, once again, we're seeing her service weapon here. Is this the iteration of it for the whole game, or are there ways to upgrade it as you meet potentially harder um, villains? Great question. <laughs> so the service weapon, um, so it transforms. So there's going to be different forms. So it's always the same weapon, but as you progress through the game, you'll get different forms. So in the demo, we're using Grip and, and Shatter, which is kind of like a, a pistol. And then the other one is a little bit like the like a shotgun, just a lot cooler than your regular <laughs> shotgun. But uh, then there's going to be several other forms um, available as, as Jesse progresses through the game. OK, so her weapon will upgrade, and, she, and her other psychic powers will get upgraded as well as you play throughout Control. Absolutely. She can mod and upgrade both her abilities and her weapons. Yeah, so these guys that you see her fighting, these are actually bureau agents that have been overtaken, possessed, and corrupted by the Hiss. Um, and some of them float up in the air, some of them, like this guy, attack her. And they take on different forms depending on how complete the corruption is. So she'll have a wide variety of enemies she'll have to defeat to regain control of the house. I love how calm she is. She just yeah, strutting through there, just shooting him down. She's like, I got this. With this chair. Yeah. Well, as I mean, as the game begins, I mean, she is kind of led to the oldest house. So maybe, maybe this has been her calling. Yeah, which she discovers. Um, the missions that we're showing you, this is roughly halfway through the game. So she does have a certain level of confidence here that she did not have in the beginning <laughs> when she first discovered these abilities. And a lot of the challenge of this game is her learning to master these powers that have just been granted to her and, and discovering their limitations and what they can do. Now, I know fans of Remedy Games obviously remember Max Payne. Uh -huh. Were there any lessons you guys learned from that game that now, along with all the new technology that's available, that you really apply to control? Yeah, I mean, you learn from every game, right? Um, and we've internally talked a lot about, uh, especially with Mixo, who's the game, game director on Control, how kind of Max Payne 2 really had everything. It had a great story, great action, a lot of replay value. And we kind of really want to make sure that Control has, has those same things. But we're bringing that sort of storytelling and mystery and, and those aspects definitely from um, Alan Wake um, in, into control. I mean, you learn from every game. Um, and I think it, it's, it's been great to hear that when, uh, when the trailer debuted in the, uh, the PlayStation media briefing, which was an incredible moment for us. We've been working for so long yeah. uh, to, to get there. And when people are like, what, what is that game? Yeah. Like, and then 30 seconds in, I could hear people around me like, that, is, is that a Remedy game? And I was <laughs> like, there is that trademark kind of visual aspect to our game. So that was, that was very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not just learning from our past games, though. Remedy always tries to innovate with every game that we make. So we are taking some narrative risks.
August 4th, 1964. Bureau agents discover the oldest house investigating an altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. It's a place of power. From the outside, it looks like an ordinary building, a brutalist skyscraper. But inside, it breaks the laws of our reality. Unstable, mad, shifting. There are rooms in the building where other dimensions leak in. We call these rooms thresholds. There is a connection between our minds and the unknown, often hostile forces intruding on our world. These forces gravitate toward everyday objects, a gun, a television, a house with a reputation of being haunted. So somehow, we affect these events. We're holding the key, but we don't have a clue on how to use it. We're dealing with dangerous, unknown forces here. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? We're on a mission to find answers to these questions. Or die trying. This house is a shifting place. There are rules and rituals. You can keep traveling deeper. 